Hello and welcome to the WCS European Finals Season 3. This is the second day for just now joining us. We're down to four players who could possibly take first place. A big, big freaking deal. But also, the other four players that already were here are going to play for that fifth spot to try and get themselves to Toronto. Which, as I understand, is a lot of WCS points, an awesome trip, and $5,000 even if they don't win a single freaking game. So that's a pretty good deal. So we're going to kick that off pretty soon. But first, join me as I meet somebody very special to me. <laughs> Hello, Grubby. <laughs> Grubby Jeff. is going to be commentating and doing some analysis for us. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing really good. Looking forward to today, of course, as always. Yes, today's going to be an awesome day. Really excited about it. Uh, which of these final four? Okay, let's do that again. Who, who's your pick to win this whole thing? I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, I, th I think MMA is the favorite here. I said that last week. I still think so. But I think the one who can give him the hardest time is up against him in the semifinals. If he takes that, I think the finals might be a little one-sided but on the other hand all four are really good so okay knows? well grubby gives the blessing to mma but let's take a look at that bracket and see exactly what his competition is going to look like take a look there you can see the mma is going to face off against vortex vortex the last foreigner hope for this top four can he do it can he overcome these crane adversaries but of course at the bottom of that bracket we have mc taking on genius battle of the friends pretending to talk some smack i'll do what i can uh, folks to try and get them to put out some a little bit more smack talk. I think MC's good for it. The guy dresses Undertaker for a, a player selection one time. So, and he, he's of he's of the belief that we should all act like wrestlers. So I think it's possible. Um, and that's that bracket. But let's also take a look at how we're kicking off today because we got a lot of StarCraft for you guys today. This is that under bracket. These four players are going to play for that fifth and final spot to Toronto in Season 3 Finals. Yeah, Nurcho and Stardust, of course, they have some history in the last uh, few weeks. <laughs> Nurcho, kindly history, as he does, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. kindly as he does, uh, suggested a career path change for uh, Stardust. But Stardust, he doesn't want to quit StarCraft 2 because he's having too much fun. Um, he <laughs> coined himself as a safe player, but he is also very aggressive. And Nurcho has been dying a lot to aggressive Protoss builds. So, the match between these two, I think, is sure to produce fireworks. I can't say that it for sure will be close. I think one of them will take it in a rout, in a wipeout. But who knows? Uh, I'm very, very curious about this. Maybe even a little bit more curious about this than the semifinals. Really? You put it that high up there? Uh, for me personally, I, I, I'm really looking forward to this game. I think it's going to be very interesting. So I, I just have to echo uh, Grubby's sentiments. There's been a little bit of, as we say, fireworks between these two players. But of course, here in person, uh, it, it's all about the game. They, want, they both want to go to Toronto. They both want to win those points. And, and of course, that pride, that smack talk, that's the flavor that's in there as well. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a quick look at Nurcio through this video. So it's actually hard to talk about my ri rivalries since you, know, you could name a few like for GG, Mana, uh, people like that. But maybe it's more of a, you know, they consider me their rivalries since I don't see them uh, for me as, as one. Uh, I guess Mana is the biggest rival since, you know, we are both uh, top players in Europe fighting for uh, being the best player in Poland, but it doesn't affect me in games or in real life, actually. Where do I see myself among the European Zergs? Because I mean, Stefano, uh, we can't argue he was the best in terms of results. I guess I was always a second after him and somewhere around there was Vortex. But lately there is a lot of Zergs that, you know, we could count in top five. Nice little closer look at Nurcio. Um, I actually have to say, let's just, a tip of the hat to ESL TV for the, the videos they've been doing. These introductions have been pretty awesome and they're great every day. Yeah, I really like also that they did different videos today from yesterday. Because of course you could play the same video all weekend long. But again, a new side to Nurcho, a new short little snippet. Uh, I think it makes the match more interesting too. Love that pre-production. Absolutely. So check those out on, their, on ESL TV's YouTube as well if you want to check them out afterwards. Uh, but speaking of player videos, we also have his opponent today, Stardust. Hi, my name is Sun Soki. I'm from South Korea and now I'm living in Switzerland and then I'm 23 years old. 
I have only one older sister. She hates me. Sometimes I, I'm very bad manner to my family. Actually, I don't make big trouble, just small trouble, like make some people angry. I don't fight much, just one time or two time because I'm very weak. I wish to be like scientist, but my brain is not too good for science. My game brain is more useful, so I decided to be pro gamer. When I decided to be pro gamer, my mom's very angry. Make break my computer, like monitor is disappear sometimes. And then when I get the semi pro gamer license, and then she said, okay, keep going to pro gamer. I want to be living in other culture, like America, Europe also, learn too much, and then I can speak English or Swiss German, German, every language. I hope so, living in Europe or America, and yeah, I hope so. Stardust is actually freaking adorable. He is, he's an awesome guy. So, ladies and gentlemen, for you at home, by the way, if you want to join us on the conversation, make sure and check out that social media, at ESLTV. Also, hashtag WCSA. Let's get the word out. Let's make sure that everyone's tuning into WCSA as this is the final European day for WCS uh, for 2013. It's a pretty big day for us. Um, so make sure and join in. But we're also doing that fan art. We'll talk more about that later. But just as a quick thing, submit your StarCraft II related fan art and hashtag WCS. We'll take a look at it the number one win a collector's edition Heart of the Swarm. Uh, Grubby, let's talk a little bit about this match. I, I want to ask you, yesterday, Stardust tried out some different builds, and he kind of came out and said, I was stonewalled. I didn't really know what to do. I felt like he lost a lot of confidence. How do you recover from that? Because we've all been there before. You and I have talked about this, and when someone puts you down hard and you, you, you're back at the drawing board, how do you recover one day later? It's hard to say without completely knowing his mental makeup and in going into this game because did he have all his eggs in one basket? We saw him at DreamHack, and he had a lot of uh, specific styles which people were not aware of. He came here and he prepared new styles. Did he do that to change, just for the sake of changing? To say, this way, my adversaries cannot study me. This way, I bring something new and maybe surprise my opponents. Or did he do it because he thinks his old style doesn't work anymore? The big question is, does he still have his old strategies fully functional, or did he switch the way that he thinks about the matchup? If he still has his old strats and he says, what I did yesterday doesn't work, I go back to my old tricks. It really depends on what's going on in there and, and how he prepared for this match. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're all really excited to see what is going on Stardust Head and can Nurcio pull it out and recover from yesterday. It's a big match. There's some fireworks going on. A lot is on the line. But... Let's go ahead and throw it to the cast and get this match underway. It is Apollo and Calaris. Thanks very much, guys. Welcome to the caster's desk for what is sure to be a very awesome day of StarCraft, the final day of WCS Europe for 2013. And we start things off with Stardust versus Nurture. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a great year so far for the World Championship Series here in Europe. Season 1, 2, and now 3. And as you said, unfortunately, this is the last day of the World Championship Series here, the Europe Premier League for 2013. But I'm pretty sure when we have five best of uh, fives coming in and then the best of seven, of course, to wrap up the evening to find out a champion. But let's start at the beginning. We have the first game to decide who's getting closer towards that fifth place. Who will go to the season three finals to represent Europe, to go to Canada, a wonderful place. I would love to go there. I've actually never been to Canada. I've heard amazing things about it. It sounds pretty good, yeah. I, I saw we saw the last event, which was NASL's uh, Toronto Bash, uh, which was pretty cool to see. Yeah. Uh, and now they're going back for some more action there in Canada. Uh, but this is really important for all four of these players because once you get to the season finals, you don't only accrue a really nice, healthy amount of points. I think last place alone is like five thousand yeah. uh, dollars season finals, which is massive for a last place in a tournament. Yeah, crazy. It's uh, you know, it's a lot of money, a lot of prestige, and of course, to have the chance to play in front of that amazing Canadian crowd, as it was so big when NASL ventured over there a while back now. But we are very almost ready, as we see the vetoes are going to happen very, very shortly here. Um, so th there's these four players: Nurture, Stardust, Targa, and Duck Duck fighting for that single 
last slot before we jump up to the real semi-finals to be able to decide who's going to win. Not too sure how this is going to go down, to be honest, but I just want to, you know, go over something that Grubby said. It's, it started us this feeling that we could see a change from him today. Mm. I spoke to him a little bit before, and he says that yesterday he was a little bit uncomfortable with what, how things went down, the build he yeah. chose, and uh, May decided to change things up. Yeah, that did seem like there was a little bit of uh, uncomfortableness there for mm. Stardust. Um, but now going into a series against Nurchio, there's... It, it's weird because as much as there's not as much pressure to win WCS EU, there's still quite a bit of pressure there. You still want to go to the season finals. That's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, and for a player like Stardust, uh, you know, he's he really, really wants a lot of points. If he went to the season finals, for example, and got like a top spot finish, he could still go to BlizzCon, I think. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, anybody, to be honest, anybody, uh, even though the, the percentage is very, very low, if you were to win the Europe Premier League or advance to the season finals and then go on and win it, you're going to BlizzCon, basically. Uh, it's, a, it's a hard ordeal, but uh, anything is possible in that regard. But we do have the vetoes, so let's now concentrate on this match. We have Akalon waste out the way for Nurcio. Uh, which is a, a standard pick here. It's yeah. the pick for Zerg players when you only have one veto because these games are still best of fives. And then we've seen the pick uh, for our Protoss player, which was Polar Knight disappearing yeah. as well. So uh, this is the PVZ map pool of choice for uh, almost the entire weekend so far. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. Polar Knight can be a tough one for Protosses against Zergs. Absolutely. Um, you know, with Let's look at these two players. The, the last games that we saw, they both got pretty destroyed. You know, Nurcio mm. lost 3-0 versus MMA. Stardust lost 3-1 versus Vortex yesterday. The difference between the both is that Stardust actually played against a different Zerg player, whereas Nurcio did play against Terran. But here are the five maps that we'll be going over to, uh, if need be. So, Derelict Watcher. Things aren't going to be too easy to start things off here for Stardust. Derelict Watcher being one of those maps if you had more than one veto, we'd probably see eliminated. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Then Whirlwind, start, things start to get a little bit easier. Frost can be a bit... Mm, and Yonsu and Belcher Vestige is fine. So I think this series will start harder. And to be honest, start maybe an equalizer in the Whirlwind game. Yeah. And then things can get hard again by Stardust. But, you know, maps don't determine everything here. Oh, that's true. It's very clear that that first map, obviously, Nurture's choice actually going into this because of those seedings. But here we have Stardust, a player that has had a great record across every single dream hack he's been attending in the WCS system. And that's reflective in these numbers. Uh, but yesterday didn't look that same player that we saw during those tournaments. So now, can he step up that game? Uh, and against a player like Nurture, I think I think we certainly could see that from him. Yeah, Stardust has just exploded onto the scene in 2013 with his win at DreamHack Summer, his semi-final at DreamHack Valencia, a ninth to 12th spot in Bucharest. Amazing results, absolutely amazing. Nurture, on the other hand, has, to be honest, done all of that, but a long time ago. Uh, in 2011, 2012, as he said, was second behind Stefano, who was achieving the big, big results. But online, Home Story Cup, DreamHack, he's got a lot of wins through those years. In 2013, he's been a lot slower, but has now really started to put results and start to argue for that position as the top Zerg player. Yeah. But I think we cannot say that he is that one. Not yet, as Vortex is the only non Korean in that top four currently sitting, waiting for a chance to win the entire thing here today. Yeah, Vortex is looking pretty powerful in this tournament, but on to our first map here. Derelict Watcher, we already pointed out one or two of the weaknesses uh, for Protoss players before, but it really does all revolve around that second to third base, whether or not you're going to be able to really establish that. But at the same time, does Stardust even go that far? Does he even try and get that? Do we see some aggression from him? Yep, I'm not too sure, but I, I, I am feeling towards uh, Nurture opening up this game aggressive. Get the first win under your belt. Feel confident, especially after losing three games in a row yesterday, and then take it from here. Stardust, on the other hand, is very well known for his aggression. It may be something that we see from him, though, in this game. Definitely. The way that he's been playing Zerg versus Protoss, or should I say Protoss versus Zerg, over the last couple of months has been very aggressive. These two have met before on online cups. Nurcio's beaten him hard, told him to uninstall the game because all he can do is <laughs> eight gate. Yeah. These two players is uh Nurcio didn't bring up his name, but they do have a bit of rivalry between them. Just a little bit. Yes, they do. And now we find out who is going to advance on to contend for that fifth spot at the WCS season three finals as Stardust and Nurcio battle it out. Let's see who will advance on. 
Derelict Watcher, our first map. Spawning down to the bottom left-hand corner, our Red Protoss, representing my insanity as well as Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Stardust. And up to the top right-hand corner, our blue Zerg, representing Acer as well as Poland. Give it up for Nurcio. So, the first game of the day, the first best of five of the day here between these two players. Of course, they'd need to win two games in a row if they were to go to the Season 3 Finals. And if we were to look back over the years, Nurcio not representing Europe at a big tournament, it's kind of weird. Yeah, kind of is. I mean, if we look back on a lot of the tournaments that he's uh, been representing in uh, in 2012, like uh, Intel Extreme Masters, Dreamhack, he was he was kind of just everywhere uh, and accrued himself quite a lot of money off the back of it. So mm. it would kind of be strange. Look at the overall uh, movement out here by Nurcio. Let's imagine a cannon rush was to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, he <laughs> could have been in trouble. Yeah, maybe. Uh, he does have his spawn and pull on the way there, but he's not looking for it with his overlords here. This is something I've seen from Nurcio a lot. His overlord movement here was something which really, really hurt him when he, I mean, when they played last time, when he played against Genius, Genius sorry, last yeah. time uh, in the round of 16. Belshire Vestige. <clears throat> exactly. But the overlord that is headed towards the third base will give him vision towards the third of his opponent very early on here. He did scout around in case it was a pile of ore. Cannon rush happening with that drone. But one thing that he may be expecting from an opponent, which is a build that Stardust uses a lot, is a fast third base. Yeah. And if he's able to see it as it's been put down, I wouldn't be surprised if Nurture tried to punish it. It makes sense with the way that the Overlord's going already. Yeah, this is exactly right. I mean, we, we spoke about how Nurcio on in the round of 16 against Genius was gearing himself up for later stages in the game. And Nurcio's a player, a, a Zerg player, who is notorious for just dying before that even happens, um, <laughs> unfortunately for him. So he, he looks to be gearing up for a very, very similar style in that regard, even just with the Overlord movement. Um, and the question is, is that will he be able to deal with it if Stardust pushes him? Well, Nurcio's overall play style against uh, Protoss is hoping on denying the third base. That's something he really likes to focus yeah. on a lot, because if he's able to do that, then he puts himself in a very good position. And from there on out, he would love to go Ling Hydralis, Ling Roach, into Mutalist switches. Very common from Nurture. Uh -huh. Stardust, on the other hand, though, will open up the game slower, but then will speed up things, whether it be a double forge play into some form of timing. But the key word here is timing. Stardust loves to hit different sorts, unexpected sometimes, timings against Zerg players when they're at the weakest. And Nurture is going to have to look out for that. He really is. Uh, I think, you know, having spoken to him just a little bit before, he's he's anticipating uh, what's going to come from his opponent. But he said to me that he has a mental block against this kind of aggression. And that, I mean, <laughs> no better words to really describe it other than that, because uh, he, he has just fallen to it in the past. But now, knowing that it's going to be coming probably in this series, can he deal with it? Yeah, well, Stardust has thrown down a Stargate here, so it's not going to be a super fast third, which that Overlord is looking for. And Nurcio spots an extra gateway there, but doesn't know what tech's been thrown down behind it, because technically that could have been a robotics facility. The Stargate's more expensive, so of course it could have been the robotics facility here. Mm. So he's unsure of what tech his opponent's going for. This is going to be some vital information that Nurcio needs to find. You have different responses for different tech choices. Twilight Council will require one response, Robotics Facility will require a different one, and then we have the Stargate as well. This is information with the Overlord spread that Nurcio has without an Overlord down south that could be very difficult to achieve. And right off the very beginning of this game, or this series in general, I like that Stardust has picked the Stargate choice because of how prevalent Mutalist play eventually becomes in Nurcio style. So if you have that initial Stargate, you have a little bit of an easier time transitioning against it. Um, but at the same time, I'm kind of hoping that we don't see the same style from Stardust that we saw on this map yesterday against his opponent, because that did not work out. He will change it up. He's yeah. told me he will change it up. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, he spoke a lot with Daisy, and Daisy influenced his play style yesterday, and he wasn't too <laughs> comfortable with it by the end, of course, losing quite heavily to Vortex. He said he was going to go back to what he knows best. So Stardust, that, that like mentioned, could be some form of timing. But by the way, this Phoenix has not been scouted yet and is going to go into the main base to have a look around. Nurcio added on a very early Roach Warren in case there was some very early gateway pressure. 
He hasn't got Zirkling Speed until now, and also has three mm. one random wild drones in the middle, uh, which is an obvious mistake here. They're the neutral drones. If you go near them, you claim them, and then you can go and go Take make them back as yeah. probes. Yeah, that's that's how those work. Uh, so. That would be, be an interesting thought. But then with Spore Crawlers are going down, even in the middle, uh, just to be able to zone out those Phoenixes a little bit. But they're catching Overlord for free, and they're uh, going to try and hunt some more down. Yep, and uh, so far, just these Phoenixes doing as much damage as they can. He's not over-investing into the Phoenixes like yesterday, which was a double Stargate. And now these two drones do return back. Uh, of course, there's always the catch in the middle of the transfer here. And it's very easily just picking off a couple. So, so far, so good. He is going up to a total of five Phoenixes. We should see plus one. And even the robotics facility come down very, very soon here. Doesn't want to uh, stay away from Colossus too long in this game, especially considering the tendencies of Zerg players is so often heavily focused on light units, Zerglings and Hydralis. Colossus do great against them. And well, plus one going down for both of these players, as well as quite a lot of Zerglings in production here. Maybe realizing that his opponent's looking for a third base very yep. soon. He's going to so. try and get to it. Yep. And even behind this, gas is on the way as well. So looking for a transition out of that, uh, which is always so important. Spock he may be able to get this, by the way. Mm. There's only three gateways. There's only two sentries and two zealots. The if Nurtio is able to get a cancel on this third base, he puts himself in a good lead. Three more Zealots have been warped in. It's a total of five, but there's 20 odds Zerglings. 30 odds, 32. That's a lot of Zerglings. And these Zealots are not going to have plus one in time at all to try and deal with that. It's going to be up to the Mothership Corps to do a lot of work here, but the Zealots will push these back. More Zerglings are going to rendezvous with this. And yeah, Phoenix is going to have to do some lifts here, I think, to help out. Just Yeah, just anything. Uh, oh, actually, that's quite a lot of Zealots that have been added on. So he will actually be able to push this away. And he's got his wall tight here, uh, away from these Zerglings. So, so far, good hold there by Stardust. Doesn't allow Nurture to get that easy snipe on the, the hatchery. But we do see the Hydralis Den being placed down, and the Spire too. Two uh, bits of information which Stardust will have to go search for now, as he's started to hold off. He hasn't seen anything yet, what this layer is. This is an interesting result, i got to say, because normally when Nurture commits to killing off a third base, he, he oftentimes gets the cancel. Mm. So now Nurture being in that position and losing, having so much, 1,300 resources to zero yeah. lost. That's a big deal. So it's, it's a lot of damage being dealt out by these Phoenixes, and they're going to catch any Hydralis that try to go down to the natural here, which is what they're waiting for, I think. And Nucho, is he going to lose any loose units here? This Phoenix is looking around. That it's, Hydros easily could have been killed. It's funny because it is almost exactly the same style as we saw in Derelict Watcher, but this time it's going to work out a little bit better, I think. Because yeah, I mean, he's dealing more damage with yeah. his Phoenixes. Uh, I think the second Stargate was added on a little bit earlier last time. It's just a little oh, yeah, bit yeah. of a difference with his build, but it's a lot more efficient as we see from Stardust this time. He's got a third base established, no problem. He actually hasn't gone towards the robotics facility. Instead, the Templar Archives. And, well, look at that. That's oh. actually kind of painful for Nuccio. Isolated Hydralists, and right now they killed two Phoenix during all of that, but now it's almost 3,000 resources lost for Nuccio. Those Hydralists were so, so vulnerable in that position. Well, Stardust is just controlling this game from the get-go. Yeah. And he's got plus two attack on the way. Zealot Charge, a great upgrade. Uh, going to be really mm -hmm. good for these Zealots, of course, getting close and tight to those Zerglings and those Hydralis. He's got the Templar Archives down. He can start to go over to Archons if you want. He can start to reshort Storm soon. And he's got still wow. these Phoenixes, which are going to do very good. Exactly. If he catches any more Hydralisks isolated out of position, there's 14 on the map, sure. Uh, but still, those Phoenix, if they attack with Zealots, they're going to do a lot of damage to that. This is a really strong army that Stardust is actually amassing. And well, Hydra range and Hydra speed now on the way. Plus one attack two for Nurcio. But is not in the best of shape at this moment. He's taken a lot of damage to these Phoenix. He does have a high mm. Hydralist count. Yeah. But as you can see by the supplies, it's not too different. Stardust just a little bit behind here. But the amount of Phoenixes he has, with all the Zealots as well, it's a great combination. And if he lifts the, the right amount of Phoenixes here, it's a pretty good setup for him. And... I guess it's just going to be straight over to the Archons as well to complement this. This army is very difficult for Nurcio to stop. He's getting a lot of Bane Links. That's going to mm. kill off the Zealots very quickly. But if the Archons are at the front and Bane Links connect with those, that's uh, Nurcio needs to control this properly. Well, that's kind of interesting because this can work out rather well for Nurcio if he gets the right connections. Mm. It's going to depend on the Archons, where they are, and it's going to depend on the Phoenix lifts here. It certainly is. Um, we'll see. And right now, Stardust doesn't Ooh. know this is here. Since Fugal Hooks is not there. But that's still a really big army here for Nurcio. And he's going to go try and go for this. Oh, and now Stardust is like, oh god. 
Yeah, this is a little bit quicker than he was expecting, trying to split some of those zealots up at the same time, though they do. A lot of them die off very quickly. Wow. Uh oh, that's a lot of Hydralisks left. And that was a lot of detonations onto those zealots. The zealots are just gone. Oh, dear me. Stardust, this could be bad news bears. The a few banelings that remain kill off a sentry. And now those two Archons are completely vulnerable. One of them goes down. More Hydra is still going for the fight. And with this with this army that Nurture has put himself in, like the all of the Phoenix dying off, you can't replenish those that quickly. Stardust was like, how the hell did these banelings do that? Yeah. He was not expecting the banelings to come in and it did work really well for Nurture. He's lost the cannon there as well. The Zealots do get warped in. He may be able to clean this up, but he's gonna lose a lot of probes. And the reinforcements are coming here. Great position with that, uh, the Hydralis as well. Super smart play from Nurture. Very good engagement. Stardust was left completely vulnerable in that, left in a desperate situation. And now the Zerglings reinforcing, doing a lot of damage here. Just any little bit of damage that he can do at this point is pretty good. Uh, but how many workers is... Okay, 10 to 9. So he kind of evened things up in terms of losses, but he does have a more powerful economy behind this. Dark step. Shrine is on its way if any Dark Templars come to play here. It's but obviously a long way away, though, still. The one thing I'm slightly scared of for Nurture, though, is he doesn't have a fourth base anytime soon. Like, it's not going up at all. Well, if he's able to pick off this third and get to that, it won't matter, but that's that's the question here, isn't it? Oh. A good detonation again. But at the same time, a lot of Zealots left over, plus two weapons in on those, well, so there's no carapace actually on these Hydralis, so they have to be careful about these engagements. The Banelings absolutely need to connect with more Zealots. Yeah, and more and more units getting over here. That Dark Shrine's almost finished. One or two DTs just warped in here. Stardust may be able to hold this third base. It's the most important part of all of this, and Nurture continues to hammer through. He has a counter pylon over there to warp in DTs on the other side of the map here. And uh, he's, I think he's warped in a couple defensively to, uh, to start things off with. Dark Templar going to start working on a little yeah, bit of this army. Yeah, Nurture's like, oh god. That's annoying. He has to retreat. He could actually use detonations for the Banelings and try and kill them off. And I think he's going to manually try. He did there. Uh, so there's one or two. Kills off one Dark Templar. Will he get the couple? No, two, two still remain there. And this is uh, going to force Nurture back. Uh, and this is actually rather good here for Stardust. He's buying himself a little bit more time, but Nurture's still ahead in supply. The probe count's at 65, so it's still good across three bases. Yeah. But that was a bit of a rocky moment there from Stardust. He 100% wasn't expecting that kind of style. He didn't see the Bailing Nest. He didn't see the Bailing Nest until too, too late. Now this Dark Templar has to get out of there because those Overseers are on the way. Um, this army is still not that big from Stardust. Army supply is 88 to 65. Once this Dark Templar dies, there's not a whole lot holding back Nurture. And I mean, we don't need to talk about anything, to be honest, apart from the fight. That's all it's focused on right now by both players. They've yeah. stuck on the same economy. Here oh. comes the fight. Banely is crashing into some of the Archons there, but at the same time, they do connect with a lot of those Zealots. That's the big juicy moment that Nurture wanted. And there you go, yeah. GG, well played. So Nurture's army was just better. Yeah. <laughs> Hydralis, Bailing, Zergling is better than Heavy Zealot and a couple of Archons. And this this two this two Stargate play for Stardust, it didn't work yesterday. I felt that it might have a better chance here today because there was that Spire down. There was the opportunity, obviously, for Nurture mm. to go into his normal play. But he's like, well, I actually just see what you're doing. I can just make Hydralisks and do really well. The, the, the worst part about that defeat for Stardust, which is why he's probably looking like that, is just remember at the start of the game how much damage the Phoenixes did. Mm. It was like 3,000 resources to like 200. So there was a massive 2,800 resource difference. He picked off overlords, drones, uh, a lot of Hydralisks as well. Yeah, lots. And then now, what happens if Stardust says, if I try that style again and I don't do the same amount of damage, because you can't guarantee you do get that amount of damage down, then Nurture won't play from that far behind and he'll be even stronger. Mm. So the weird part about that loss is that it was shut down even though he had a lead. If the game is equal, then it will get shut down harder. So he now has to approach this next game maybe completely different. And I oh. actually feel he won't do the same. Oh yeah, I have to agree with that. I feel that for Stardust on Derelict Watch, that's kind of his, we, we spoke about it before me and Grubby, like his risk build of, you know, this map's hard anyway. I'm going to try and throw something, uh, a spanner in the works and see what can get done. But now going on to game number two here, as we have spawning down to the bottom left-hand corner, our red Protoss, representing my insanity as well as Korea. Give it up for Stardust. And up to the top right-hand corner, our blue Zerg, representing Acer and Poland. Give it up for Nurcio.
A fantastic day to spend it all watching StarCraft, because that's what we're going to be doing all day. Oh, yeah. We've got a lot of best of fives coming, five best of fives, and then the grand final, which will be a best of seven later on. But Stardust here really has to change it up. I don't think he can play the same again. No, I, I have to agree completely. I think that changing it to maybe a, something he's a little bit more used to would be the best way of doing this. Uh, and interestingly enough for him, on a map like this, if he were to even have gone back to the kind of daisy style that he was using with warp prisms to the you know ramps, etc., if Nurture actually took the third base in that kind of left bottom left position towards his opponent, uh, not straight down, then it's much harder to actually get the warp prism to that ramp. So Nurture could really th th this base, I mean, um, then it, it would be really hard for him to even do anything like that. Yeah, I mean, Nurture is just going to be playing such a reactionary style, especially after that game number one. Very confident win for him, saying that, yeah, I can probably go on to the next part of this tournament and fight for that chance to get fifth place, fight for that chance to move on. And it's it's a good bracket for him, I would like to say. Even though Stardust is known as a Zerg killer, Nurture is very good against Protoss. We've seen that in recent times. Yeah. If there was another Zerg, he's also got, if not one of the best Zerg versus Zergs in Europe, and he always has had one of the best Zerg versus Zerg games, so... It's a good bracket for Nurture to do well. It really is. Can he get past Stardust first, though? Of course, the My Insanity star. Or is Jack G the star now? That's the real question, isn't it? Mm, round of eight. So, pretty good from Jack G so far uh, in Dewey Cesperia. I think it's still Stardust. Uh, after the Dream Hack win, I think a lot of people would look to Stardust for I that. I mean, people can may see that Jack G would be the better player over Stardust, but yeah. Stardust won Dream Hack with. My Insanity, I think, therefore, he is the My Insanity star. Yeah. Dust. Very impressive there, Paul. <laughs> well, the Zerglings are going to head down to this bottom right-hand corner. He still hasn't scouted out his opponent yet, uh, but for Nurcio so far, it doesn't really matter too much. He's got double uh, hatcheries on the way. He's uh, just going to be going up against a pretty normal Nexus timing here from Stardust off the way of a gateway expand. Um, I wonder if we may see Stardust try to punish this third base, because without taking an early gas to get Zergling speed, first of all, it's going to be very difficult to deny the probe and the Mothership Call, who move out together hand in hand to build a pylon together, uh, simply because you, you can't run around and snipe the probe. And then we could see some form of gateway attack towards the third base here, but the problem is for uh, Stardust, is he hasn't got no idea where his opponent is, and he's going to lose that probe. Well, so he doesn't know if he's top right or top left from this position, so it is hard to launch an attack when you don't know where he is. And even still, uh, how has how has the Protoss you determined that your opponent doesn't really have speed on the way, like, without having scouted inside? What well, do you just kind of say, well, you know, you've got these hatcheries down at this particular time, I'm assuming that you're probably not going to have that. What's How, how would that work out? I mean, it's for him. It's a, it's almost kind of risky, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, he's gonna. Uh, we'll see what he wants to do. He has three gateways on the way, so it looks like he is going to go for this. Yeah, he's uh, just uh -oh. he's just got it. You know, it's, it's kind of already planned out. Yeah. Nurture has seen this early on, and to be honest, without starting gas until now, you almost have to skip Zergling speed and just go for the Roach Warren again. You can't get Zergling speed out and defend with it. A Spine Crawl has started as well. And I think we will see the Roach Warren come into play kind of fast here, because this is going to be there an attack go. towards this third base. Yeah, he absolutely knows full intel as to what's really going on. Uh, and even a second pylon going down, it's too much of an indication that there is something occurring. I really like the pylon placement, actually, to be able to warp across there. Uh, but at the same time, well, the Zerglings, they're not going to get too much done here. Stardust has an opportunity to tickle away with these Zealots. Well, the Spine Crawl is almost finished here, and the Roach Warren is uh, almost finished as well. Can he defend this location? Uh, that Spine Crawl are finishing up at just the right time, allowing this to be fended off a bit easier. Queen might actually not even die during all of this. Uh, so that's not too the best of pickups here just yet for Stardust. Has to continue to replenish, but the more zealots that join this, ah, but the roaches are already on the way, Apollo. Yeah, two roaches on that third base there. Four roaches on that third, uh, th yeah. three roaches, sorry, on that third base. And another spine crawler starting too. He realizes the dedication to this attack. The queen also came from a, another location, so that's going to help out against the um, against the mothership core quite handily. And there's the warping of zealots. He is warping in at a very close proximity, but now that roaches are on the way, this could be a little bit harder here for Stardust. Uh, so he does go for the engagement. He's actually doing quite a bit of damage. A lot of those Zerglings dying off very, very fast. Spinecrawler's going to go down as well. That's a lot of Zealots, actually. 
That's a lot of zealots. There's 10 roaches on the way, though, and that's a lot of roaches, too. That is a lot of roaches. <laughs> Best casting ever. A lot of zealots, a lot of roaches. They're fighting, uh, and there's even more zealots on the way. But he has to evacuate this third base. He doesn't feel as if he can hold it. Well, it's not dead yet, though, is it? And there's a lot of roaches on the way. So it, it's still holdable here for Nitro, oh. as long as he doesn't lose the hatchery. And he lost the mothership core. That's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, and during and all he's this. actually pushing this back. Nicely done here. The reinforcing roaches doing a lot here. And all these units are guaranteed to die pretty much for Stardust if, if Nurture wants to. So that's quite a big hit there to Stardust. Nurture's droning at this point. He just added yeah. on three drones. He feels very comfortable in this situation. He's got Zirkling Speed on the way. And this has been pushed back. And uh, to be honest, if there's another warp in, I, I think that's really, really bad. I'm not too sure. Well, actually, no, I do like the Stalker's being warped in here. But nothing more than that. They're actually, he's microing them really well. They're really getting a good bang for their buck. The Zealots are going to continue f moving on forwards here. Zealot Extra does get warped in. Just a tank with damage for these Stalkers to try and kill off these. Good focus fire as well from Stardust. Really targeting oh, down those weakened Great roaches. micro by Nurture as well. Skipping past the Zealots to get the Stalkers on creep. And a nice transfuse as well. Just making sure that he can keep the longevity going. More roaches on the way. Uh, kind of, you know going away from the droning for a second, knowing that his opponent is still being quite aggressive with this. Uh, but Stardust behind us with the drones on the uh, you, probes you've, as you've well. You've got to admire this this uh, this war between both of them, because as a Protoss player, of course you can continue to warp in units, but you're also adding on probes. Yeah. The beautiful part is that Nurtio was squeezing two drones here, three drones there, two drones here, and is actually not too far behind which is a very beautiful dance of building units and balancing your army and your economy. So it was actually very nice what we saw from Nurtio there. He also starts up a massive drone round, but we see double Stargate as the follow-up here from Stardust. Nurtio has an overlord on the third base of his opponent. If that was to go in and spot this, obviously it would give him a nice heads up. Hmm, I can't help but feel he's so scared of the Nurtio Mutalist transition. Uh, that's, that can be the only thing that really stands out. And at the same time though, if Nurtio does get a whiff of it, all he has to do is go back into the Hydralis play, because he always throws down a Hydralis den with Spire as well. And a nice round here with these Zerglings for the counter. Yeah, good force fields as well to protect them. And those Zealots should be able to push this away for a second, whilst those Stalkers have time to actually get out of these force fields that saved them, but now also get them in. And Void Ray is even in production, realizing that the Roaches are being a bit of a hindrance. So Roaches do pick off the two Stalkers there, and that last Zealot will get destroyed as well, but 36 Zirklings on the way. He's obviously expecting his opponent to be thrown down the third Nexus. It's yeah, the normal yeah. time for it to go down, and he will try to get the cancel onto it. There's that Spire as well for Nurture behind all of this. With clear reconstitution uh, starting up for those Roaches. So the Zirklings are going to head over straight to that third base, try and do some denying of those two Void Rays. How fast can they clean this up? Not very. There's not too much of an army supply here just yet. Yeah, but the Roaches can zone out any units to try to defend it. He's yeah. going to go clean up these Zealots by the looks of it first, and then probably go around towards that third. But as you, do, uh, as you did say, the, the Spire is on its way. And with the playstyle that we're seeing, Mutalist would be very good. Obviously, we see Void Rays being made, not Phoenixes. Nurture is currently blind to what his opponent's doing. He doesn't know if it is Void Rays or, you know, what is behind this at this moment. But if he, if he again, if he finds out that it's going to be a bit more of a heavier Void Ray style, he has so many options available to him. Zerglings get a good surround there on those Zealots. And and he's going to kill this third. And once yeah. you kill this third, your oh. opponent falls so far behind. This is... This is a, a loss that he really can't take. No, he can't. He needs to keep this alive. He's trying desperately to kill off the roaches as well as the circlings, but they're not going to die fast enough. Cancellation, and Nurture is sitting pretty. And Nurture has a 1,100 gap. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. If he cleans up these zealots on this fourth drones and gets this, I think we may see the ruler switch now. Yeah. I mean, it, it really depends because from this position, of course his opponent could go and counter-attack and win the game. So it depends on how he wants to do it, but obviously Mutalists are very strong in this game at this moment. And there we go, there's the plus one attack weapons starting for those Mutalists once they come along. And he knows, like, this is exactly what I wanted to say. The fact that he sees all those Void Rays, he just goes target style, starts a load of Queen production. What are Void Rays going to do against constant Queen production if he adds them on? The ho yeah. A whole lot of nothing. And he may not go over to Mutalist because he knows with that high amount of Void Rays, there's obviously going to be more than one Stargate behind this, and which is yeah. why the ground army was so small oh, from that's Stardust. So, good. so he probably won't go Mutalist right now. He'll focus on the uh, you know low units like Lings and Roaches to maybe cancel this third again. Well, he is going to go over to Mutalus here. The thing is, though, there is no information from Stardust to actually go to Phoenixes. Yeah. If he knew and started Phoenixes, then it's much, much better for him. But at this point, he's added on two gateways. There's been no hallucinations. There's been no scout at all from him. 
So Nurture did have that decision, you know, should I or should I not? Because there is the, the more than one Stargate down, probably. And he is going to go for it. The thing is that Nurture can do, being on four bases, is send the Mulus around. If he snipes the Mothership Core here, actually. Uh, everything will just die. If he snipes that, it can't recall, and then the Void Rays are going to die. And then, of course, the, he has a good two, three minutes before Phoenix Count even rises. Yeah. And he can make tech switches again. He's just going to head straight across the map. There's seven queens out to defend against those mm. Void Rays if they get in a precarious position. But I, I love your reasoning for, you know, double Stargates being there after seeing those Void Ray numbers and maybe he goes for a different route. But Nurture feels so comfortable with Mutalisks that I'm not surprised in the end that he just went for a few of them here to do some damage. And doing a lot of damage. Here comes yeah. a recall to help out. He's losing a lot of probes already, though. Well, almost lost a Void Ray there in the process, but we'll jump on out. But again, eight workers already killed there. And he's going to get even a few more of this natural. 11 workers now dead. And Nurcio has 2,500 gas in the bank. Uh-oh. Well, and this third is not going to live for much longer. He just doesn't have the mobile army to shut this down. Yes, he may kill some Zerglings, may kill some Mutalisks, but he could sacrifice those Zerglings. And there you go. There's the cancel. 12 more Mutalisks. And a Protoss player on just two bases, on just four gases, does not have a very high... Uh, a gas income to be able to build the right units. He'll have a good small amount of them. Three Archons is obviously okay, but against the high Mulus count here, and then the Bailing Nest coming in as well to deal with the Zealots at the front. Just like we saw last game, Nurture is really playing well today. Yep, he's on top of it. And uh, we know with this Mutalist count with plus two weapons on the way as well, uh, the Archons are going to need to get some good connections with this, with this Mutalist flock. If they don't, then a lot of this army is going to die very, very rapidly for Stardust. So it's all about the positioning here and all about the you know, arguably miscontrol from Nurture if it happens. Yeah, well, this, this, uh, this could be very ugly. This could be very ugly, and I think it is going to be very ugly. Uh, Mutalists do end up flying in. They are slightly clumped, but at the same time, a lot of the Zealots on the ground trying to work on those roaches, but they're trying to get through quite a bit of it. Some really good connections with these Archons on those Mutalists, and the Mutalist count is thinning. Without those Mutalists, there's nothing to do with the Void Rays very well. Look at this. It was the miscontrol. It came back to the miscontrol. The Mutalisks were too clumped up against those Archons and took massive, massive damage. And all of a sudden, there's 13 Roaches, but there's also still five Void Rays in the sky. It's, it's too much. I, he has no Queens. No Queens. Spore Crawlers trying to burrow in locations to help this out. Is Nurture's bank going to save him here, Polaris? Because that's the one thing he's got, remember? Uh, no Minerals, though. No Minerals. Like, uh, well, a little bit of Minerals, right, but not, not the big boon of minerals that he needs to actually keep the gas going. There you go, GG. One to one. Stardust takes the second map, but by the skin of his teeth, I feel. I think Nurcio is saying, how did you do that? You weren't, that was actually my game to win, and I lost it. Yeah. Uh, he denied the third base all game long, and with that one push out, to be honest, there wasn't going to ever be another push out from Stardust. He makes the, uh, picks up the win. I can only assume that he underestimated the three Archons uh, in terms of their positioning, because that is what was the big damage dealer in that in that engagement. They were doing a lot, and the, the Zealots also were, you know, helping out quite considerably as well. If the Roaches are able to get in there and focus down the the Archons, then maybe it will be a bit of a different fight. But they were doing a very very good job holding those Roaches back. Would you would you think that maybe there should have been uh, the M the Mula shouldn't have even been there fighting? Do you think that? If Nurture had played a little bit more defensive, tucked in a little bit more rather than fighting out in the open, uses Spore Crawler Queen advantage from a higher ground, mm. and then send the Mulus around to go kill the probe line and stuff like this. Could he have just... Because Nurture throughout that game was leading heavily. Was it just that fight? And could he, if he played that game again from that same position, chosen different decisions and options to I, change the outcome of the game. I think so. I think there's a, there's a few things. You know, once you deny your opponent's third that many times over and over, there's a very high likelihood that they're going to come and attack you mm -hmm. with what they've just got, because they just feel as if they can't catch up with a four-base Zerg. So uh, the, the creep spread between the third and natural wasn't exactly connected together. That was giving a hard time for the Spore Crawlers to really get in position if that was to be in a case in the engagement. And also Mutalists engaging on the same angle as the entirety of the army as well obviously allows for the splash damage to do even more from those items. So, yeah. big, big deals.
All right, game number three, guys. One to one apiece here, effectively now a best of three, with a little bit of homework from the first two games. As we have spawning down to the bottom right hand corner, our red Protoss, representing my insanity as well as Korea. Give it up for Stardust. And of the top right, our blue Zerg, representing Acer as well as Poland. Give it up for Nurcio. All right, so Frost here. Um, one of the one of the larger maps here that these players are going to play on. But it is equalized up now. So Nurcio did win on the the map that he would have liked to win on, Derelict Watcher. And he was very close to winning his opponent's map there, which is Whirlwinds. And then we go over to a large map, and we've seen large success here from Nurcio with uh, Mutilus Corruptor style. But we notice a big change in his build. He's taken an Extractor earlier on, and he will be going for very early Zergling speed. And this is a very, very good counter to a lot of Gateway Expands. The thing is, though, that Stardust has created a wall on his ramp inside his main base here. So with a Cyber Nanit's core and a single unit to block and potentially a pylon to wall off, he can slow the game down to his own pace. He can go three gateways to an expansion. Yeah. He doesn't need to rush down this Nexus. And Nurcio's looking to get a bit of a lead earlier on through the build orders that both of them choose. I wonder if this is going to be able to do anything from Nurcio. It's a little bit uh, different to what we normally... I mean, we have seen him deviate up in the past. Uh, and uh, try and make that work out. But look at Stardust being so pr uh, well prepared for anything his opponent's going to throw at him. This is, this is uh, PVZ of old, uh, going back to Wings of Liberty mm. uh, from the Protoss point of view. It is, basically. It's, uh, I mean, the way that this is looking right now, it is exactly like a Wings of Liberty game rather than a harder Swarm one. Um, but I, I think that Stardust isn't in too bad of a position. Yeah. Uh, he's got that wall off. He may have to force uh, force himself to cancel the Nexus once he throws it down. Nurcio is going to spot the Nexus. And does, does the Overlord get spotted? No. no. Okay, so it backs off out of vision. Um, the question comes down to now, does there, there is not a cell that's been started yeah. here. And that's quite a few Zerglings coming. Imagine if they got the pylon snipe that there was power in the gateway, Ooh. for example. Mothership Core's on the way. So well, at least there's a probe around. Yeah, that does put a timer eventually on those units. And there's the Zealots starting as well. Mm. Um, but these Zerglings, they're going to be annoying. They are going to be annoying. They're not breaching the main just yet. Yeah, and as you can see, the Nexus is not going to be cancelled just off four Zerglings here. So Nurture is building more and will try to force that out. The Mothership Core is going to be very crucial in this. But obviously, Nurcio's going to back off now because he has killed the pylon, slowing down his opponent. But here are the rest of the Zerglings. Hmm. Can he get the surround, the wraparound onto the Nexus? Does it complete? And then is he able to get the kill? If he kills this Nexus... And I think that probe, he sees two more extra Zerglings on the way. He didn't see the whole lot of Zerglings here that were here, though. Throws down the pylon. Very, very smart here by Stardust. But at the same time, Zerglings are going to go to work on this Nexus. Does he get... The net. Can he get it though? He's, he's only taking half the shields. He's not close yeah, to killing it. There's... He's building more Zerglings now. Ten Zerglings. And he's really committing to destroying the Nexus. Really committing. Oh yeah. His first queen only just now really. I mean, second queen only just now popping out. But fourteen additional Zerglings. That's so if many Zerglings. He, and remember that the Mothership Core will have Photon Overcharge soon. There's a Sentry and another one on its way. He can force field the ramp there. He's going to use the Zealot to help protect it with the Photon Overcharge and the Mothership Core. I think he could have enough firepower here to kill this. We're about to find out because the Zerglings are coming across the map here. Uh, will he get that second probe? No, he doesn't yet. He splits a few off to actually catch it. And there's the more Zerglings now flooding in. Going to get full surround. And pulls away after seeing the Photon Overcharge. Can't if do he, anything. And eight more Zerglings. He's throwing all his eggs in one basket here. Uh. He needs to kill the Nexus. I guess once Photon Overcharge dissipates, but then does Stardust have the production to deal with it? He's still only counts one gateway. Mothership oh, did he make uh, Photon Overcharge is kill in there. He's got oh. one gateway at the moment, but he's, he's going to start to make a warp. Okay, he's got two gateways. Warp gate's almost done. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, he absolutely needs to warp in more units somehow, some way. Force fields there. Very nice. Well, more Zerglings coming across the map here. If he makes a wall off, there's nothing you can do <laughs> if he makes a wall off, right? Uh, he's having a little bit of a hard time with it, though. There's a lot of Zerglings here. Oh, it tries oh. to all. Zerglings flood in and force fields. They're going to have to be very good. Photon the force overcharge is down. It's gone. 
force fields. Yeah, he Ooh. can't let those units to the ramp, but he's going to try and turn around. A nice second force field there. Oh, oh actually, never mind, they slipped through. And they've been able to get out, killing off a few more probes. Stardust is feeling that this may get destroyed uh -oh. here. He's building a warp prism and he may go across the map to try and counterattack and kill his opponent. Some zerglings actually slip in as well and are actually working on those sentries, but they do end up dying. Nurcio, he's kind of half and half. He like wants to kill some units, wants to kill the Nexus. He's now going to focus on the Nexus, realizing it's going very low and he's going to get it. Good job by Nurcio sniping that out. So here's the, here's the follow-up. What happens if Stardust goes for a four gate? with a warp prism and plus one attack. <laughs> He's still got sentries. What happens if that starts to warp in and that's the aggressive standpoint for this game? And there's only Zerglings right now. There's no Roach Horn. If he starts to build a couple of pylons, which he needs to do because he's pylon blocked here and starts to increase his uh, Zealot count. <sighs> Two of these gateways. He's trying the to hide powers. the warp prism. If that so slips out and he can get... Oh, he's starting his pylon very, very late here. This is... Just everything in general is really late from Stardust. Like, the only way he was combating those Zerglings, the only way he could was with the Mothership Core. And those are just going to hang around there for quite a while, or they were doing 18 kills on this Mothership Core, but it takes such a long time to clean that up, and he has not no opportunity to really get out. Whilst Nurture behind this is just droning up. The Nexus has been thrown down here. Plus one attack is finished, but I still feel that Stardust would need to do something in this game. He's loaded up his oh. sentries, kind of get to the ramp. If he force fills that ramp and starts to warp in Zealots while rebuilding his nexus. He could get there. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Surprise, surprise, Nurcio. What's up? Hello. Where's he going to go with this, though? Okay, so he puts him down on the low ground here. He's actually just going to focus on the economy rather than the ramp. And this this is okay, though, because the, 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 the Zealots have filtered around the mineral lines anyway, and then force fields as well. Remember, plus one attack is a big, big deal here. Yeah, very much force so. Force fields still have to be good. Uh, the Zealots need to be in a good position oh. as well, but the Zerglings just wrap around everything. Force fields do save two of these sentries, but one of the Zergling, there was a Zergling in there with that sentry. Okay, that was, not, that was not the cleanest of play there. I've, uh, I've never been a big fan of sentries harassing mineral lines, uh, and uh, Stardust has not shown me the way in this game, unfortunately. Well, 12 more Zerglings are on the way. The Warp has got to be careful, because the Queen is... Uh, could pick it off eventually. And it's Mother Ship Core, yeah, trying to Ooh. do what she can. Uh, along with the sentries actually catching the Queen. Some really nice force fields there, sealing that in. There's not that many Zerglings left, actually. Nice micro here wow. by Stardust, picking up those units, continuing to keep this going down. There's only seven Zerglings left. He's got ten more in production, but if he just keep constantly warps in Zealots, he has nothing to contend with that. Well, nothing. He's got like four or five gateways. He has sentries or to be built. He like needs a bailing. He's got four gateways. He's, he can build sentries here. He's got so much gas. Bailings are obviously going to help, but so are time warps and... Uh, yeah. The start, there you go. That. GG. Stardust turns it around after a crazy, crazy start here in game number three. And a good decision making there by Stardust in the end. That plus one attack was everything. It Absolutely was, yeah. everything. And Nurture just did not see the warp prison coming in. And I suppose that comes down to very simply overall placement again. The right hand side of that map, warp prism slipped through. Yep. Uh, tough. Tough thing to... It's a tough loss to there. With. That's a tough two losses, to be honest, by Nurture. And all of a sudden, in this best of five, comes into it game number one, wins it, looks great. Starts game number two, looks great. Loses the, those two games, though. Yeah, it, it really felt like not only game two, but also even game three, to a, a lesser extent, were Nurture's games uh, with the starts he had. So now we have... Uh, we are getting onto our fourth map here. And there is all the opportunity in the world for Nurture to tie this up. All the opportunity you have to see in this series unfold. It's all the opportunities, but you've got to grab them. You don't let them slip. Yep. You don't let them slip. And that's what's happened two times in a row here by Nurture. And Stardust has been given a couple of opportunities, and he has just taken it. And is now in the lead, two games to one. One game away from moving on to the lower bracket final, basically. The final of the placement matches, the final game where he would play the winner of Targa and Duck Duck to advance on in fifth place to get that chance to represent Europe in the Season 3 Finals. And now Nurcio is in a position where he has to win two games in a row. Well, this is certainly going to be down to the wire here. As Nurcio, there's, there's no way on earth someone doesn't want to go to the Season Finals and grab themselves a guaranteed $5,000 at least. Uh, it's a pretty good cash prize. And now Yonsu is our fourth map here. A map that uh, can be hard for some Zergs to go up against uh, Protoss, mm. especially if Stardust begins to be aggressive. Well, this is this this is well, uh, this is actually smaller than uh, Belshir Vestige. Yeah, it is. So this is like the smallest map in the map pool here. 
definitely could lean towards aggression, but of course it definitely could uh, lean towards Nurture being aggressive too, man. Good. Get those Hydralis over the map a little bit faster than usual. Yum yum, with that little uh, extra Hydralis speed. As we go into game number four to find out if Nurture can bring it back or if the starters can take the 3-1. Spawn down to the bottom left-hand corner, our red Zerg, representing Acer as well as Poland. Give it up for Nurture. There he is, trying to foul this out. And up to the top right, as our blue Protoss representing my insanity as well as Korea. Give it up for Stardust. Some may say this nerd has a killer instinct because two of those games, you know, even though I have to say that Nurcio give him a helping hand in winning them, Stardust has found a way to win two games in a row there. Yeah. Pretty impressive stuff so far from him. And Gateway Expand is going to be on the cards for Stardust. And this time, Nurture is not going to try and just uh, destroy that Nexus very early on. And it looks like he's set up normally so far if he's going to go for that spawning pool first. And it is placed down on 15 supply here. Uh, so we should be seeing just, you know, something very similar to, to potentially game number one and game number two from Nurture. Just a normal game, you know, maybe focus on his playstyle, which is to try and get that cancel on the third base is another map to do so. But what is Stardust going to do to adjust now? Because I think even though he's the one in the lead, you could argue that if those games were repeated ten times in a row, that Nurture would win nine out of ten. And that one-off yeah. did go in Stardust's favor in this series. So even though Stardust is winning, I still feel that Stardust is going to make a couple of changes to his build and strategy here. Just to kind of refine it a little bit more. Maybe delay going towards um, the third Nexus very early against a player who's playing rather aggressive towards trying to stop it. Yeah, it could work out for Stardust. I, I would like to see him change it up a little bit. As you say, those refinement options that he does have uh, available to him uh, uh, are useful. And just a few Zerglings on the way for Nurture to make sure that he's well defended uh, back at home, making sure that he can hunt down pylons on the left, the right, uh, and maybe poke out and see what's going on. But for the most part, his Overlord, we'll see what it needs to hear. Which is a gateway expand. Um, yes. These four Zerklings just, I mean, they're going to look to see if they can get anything. Maybe just the probe here. Yeah. Uh, but Nurcio has gone over towards three hatcheries really fast again. This is absolutely a map where Stardust can look at this and say, all right, well, there's a third hatchery. It's kind of difficult for the queen to get down to defend. And this could be a map where we see the plus one, uh, not plus one attack, sorry, just a regular sell at play. But look at this, very nice micro by Nurcio. Yeah. Gets off a lot of hits onto that probe early on. And Stardust actually will get zero information <laughs> from this, zero. That's like he doesn't brutal. know if gas is taken on, doesn't know if there's a third down. So if he was to slap down three gateways in a row now to go for four gateways, it's completely blind. Yeah. That's completely. The, uh, just the queen coming off creep to deny that as well is kind of like, uh, you know, just... I don't want you to see anything. And now Stardust is thinking, what's, what's, what's going on behind there? What's actually happening? You were so eager to kill that. But in actual fact, stand a play uh, yeah. from Nurcio. And with the second gas being placed down by Stardust early on, it was pushing towards a Stargate play. He simply would start to bank way too, many ga too, way too much gas if he was playing on fast four gates and wouldn't have even been able to afford the three gateways in a row there. Um, from this position, Nurture is concentrating on one of the weaknesses of this map for him is the rocks in between, so he can actually transfer and move units in between these two bases. Is currently, he hasn't picked up too much information himself, I don't think. Um, no, wait, the Overlord on the Natural, sorry, has seen the Stargate, so he knows it's just a one gate into Stargate, then second. And Stardust is going to focus on those Phoenixes uh, uh, to start this game up, just like the original game. See what damage he can get done. Because he did get a lot of damage done in that first game of the series. Do you think that he will end up going for a two Stargate play, or do you think this is going to be just a, a, a bit more of a normal five Phoenix to poke down? Like he could do. Yeah, he could do. The, I mean, there's there's a couple of changes you have to make though for him. Uh -huh. um, I think like one of the changes is, I mean, maybe getting Storm faster. It is very difficult to play against like Zergling, Baneling, Hydros without any splash damage. That's very true. So I mean, Phoenixes are great. So people can argue, yeah, maybe you could have picked the Bailings, but then of course the Hydros are left over to do damage. Could have not morphed Archon straight away and just used Storm instead. So there are differences to make, whether it be small refinements or a complete change. 
I think that's a really good point that you bring up with the Storm especially, because, you know, it is so good against all of those units in its entirety. Uh, and it's not as if Stardust didn't have, you know, a uh, uh, no room at all to get that out. There was a little bit of a bank in terms of gas for a bit, uh, so there was the opportunity to do, but, well, going into this map, you, you have to be a little bit careful with those transitions. Uh, as does Zerg have to be careful with the transitions as well. It can be harder to make them work uh, when your opponent is just a stone's throw away. Well, so far, these Phoenixes haven't done too much. There's the second Stargate, by the way, nice and early. Much earlier than uh, the game we saw previous. And running away with those Phoenix, making sure he doesn't lose any of them. Catching a few drones, he got two in total, so not too bad. So we're going to see a lot of Phoenixes in this game. His yeah. actually entire composition is going to be Phoenixes for a lot of the game. And he's got a very early Twilight Council here too. It's looking very, very similar to game one, so we're anticipating charge. I think the, the second Stargate was added on after the Nexus, the third Nexus in game yes, one. Yes, it though. was. Yeah. But in the, the games that he played yesterday, this was how he played this was. against Vortex, and it didn't work out too well. But I, that's because he simply didn't do that much with the Phoenixes. Well, and Vortex had a really good read in his opponent very, very quickly. Yeah. So, you know, just using that and being able to say, well, you have a lot of Phoenix, I'm just going to make a lot of ground units and kill you. Uh, whoop, drones trying to transfer. And Phil sneak out during all of this. I mean, Nurture's drone count's okay, it's at 60. Um, he, uh, I mean, we are going to see this third base come down from Stardust, but the Phoenix count really have to do a lot of damage here. I mean, you, you're spending so much money into them. This is not going over to Colossus fast. The thing is, though, how well are the Phoenixes going to aid in helping out? Or does he just use Zealots alone to be able to protect his third base? Remember, there's no Forge or upgrades yet. Four Zealots, mm. five Zealots there. Does have the, the Mothership Core as well. But we do see a lot of units being made now. Inertia may be looking to try and get that as we were expecting cancel on it. But should it be defended like previously? He did it in game number one on Derelict Watcher. Can he do it here as well? Uh -huh. Only Zerglings and four Roaches. I don't think that's enough. I really don't think that's enough. Of course, yes, he doesn't have the upgrades like you mentioned, but if uh, if these Zealots, if he warps in a few more, I think he should be able to defend this. Yeah, and he's got a lot of energy on these Phoenixes too. So, I mean, he's picked up the Roaches, which are the big threat to the Zealots here, while the Zealots clean up the, the Zerglings. So, Stardust holds on to his third base without too much trouble here. We have the Dark Shrine on the way in the production tab. Void Rays as well as Zealot Charge too, so a nice mix up here. But we do have the Hydralis then coming in for Nurture. More Zerglings, they won't be able to do anything here. The Phoenix is using their energy very, very nicely and very, very well. And and the resources lost there for Nurture is uh, pretty pretty damaging. I uh, really, I really, was look scary. at, okay, so with the Dark Shrine, right? That was something that helped him out a lot in that game and actually started to stabilize himself. Yeah. It's much faster here. And what is the only detection he has? Mm. Overseers. What is faster, Overseers or Phoenixes? Phoenixes. If the Phoenixes stop the Overseer <laughs> and DTs are able to defend and keep him alive here, this is perfect. Oh, uh, we're back to StarCraft 1. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that's, uh, uh -oh. that's pretty cool. Uh-oh. He wins. needs to warp in a DT here if he can. Yeah. Uh, he's, he can't lose this Nexus. Uh-oh. Photon Overcharge goes down, but Nurture realizes he actually has to kill oh. this third base. He's going to get it. He is wow. going to get this. Wow. That wasn't meant to happen. Ah. Phoenixes leave for a little bit here, and the Zealots mess up. Oh, you and had one job. You had one job. Just make sure that Nexus didn't get picked off. And now all of a sudden, that gas has really been hindered here for Stardust, who is trying to do a <laughs> lot of different things. Now getting a forge. Dude, the parent Phoenix has come back and there's no Nexus. They're like, what have you done, kids? What have you done? This is all in rubble. Poor little guys. And this is good for Nurture. He's going over to the same army composition, if you notice. The Bailing S has been thrown down. He's going to have that plus one melee on those bailings as well as the plus one attack coming in for the Hydralis. A couple of DTs getting whooped in here, but the noticeable difference is there's no Templar Archives. So he's going to focus very heavily on these Phoenixes stopping the Overseers. And if he can get DTs into the mix, that's going to help out his defense. Storm obviously is a fantastic thing, but he's been hurt so much with losing this third base. He could have had two gases extra mining. He could have had, you know, an extra 240 odd gas a minute here. Mm. But that's that's not the case, unfortunately. Now, yeah, that's uh, that's certainly a tough spot to be in here for Stardust, and especially with the upgrades coming out for Nurture as well. Uh, it's straight to that very very mid game focus with Roaches, Hydras. This army is going to be very strong for Nurture. Oh, uh, Temple Archives is coming in now. Get the storm, get the storm. But yeah. can he? Can he in time? 
That's what we're going to find out because Nurture is going to go for an attack now to punish a, a bleeding opponent who lost his third Nexus when he wasn't aiming to lose it. And now Nurture starts the bailing morph, has more and more units spreading across. The creep is in one direction to this third. He's got a higher supply. Can Stardust hold on? Huh. Cancels the bailings and moves on back. So he's just going to wait a little bit longer here for this. DTs get warped in there and quite a few of them. Four DTs. Five oh, DTs. Damage. He doesn't have a single Overseer. Nope. He doesn't have a single one. And if the Phoenixes do their job right, they're going to try and aim to pick off that Overseer. So Stardust is looking to hold on. If he's able to hold on long enough, then maybe he can get towards Storm, which would be great against this. But there's Queens in the mix here as well. Things are getting difficult. He's still not mining gas on that base. Hmm. This is, this is getting treacherous. It really is. Nurcio setting himself up well. Uh, again, uh, I, I will point out that the Bailing Star has centrifugal hooks, but against a Zealot composition, it's actually not that important. Time warp's going to be super important, though, isn't oh, it? Oh, that's true. Yeah, if he's, got the he's got two time warps available. He may just use one and then use the other for a photon overcharge or goes double time warps here. All right, Nurture's going the other way. Oh, just try. He's drawing right, DTs the DTs are getting out of in him. there. DTs are going to do so much. That's five DTs. There's no Overseer still. Time warp Three goes down. Overseers come in, and I'm pretty sure the Phoenixes are going to be looking for him. Yeah. And uh, going to pick up quite a few of these Hydralisks as well. Have to pull on back. Those Queens caught in that time warp were the slowest units of all time. All right, Sodus has got so much money. Just spend your money, bro. <laughs> get rid of him. <laughs> He's only on seven gates. Just get rid of this money. He's got everything. way too much money at this moment. He's Chronobus and his gateways to try to spend this money. And he's been given a, a lot of time here. Oh, oh there they are. Bye bye, Overseers. Although the Hydra is trying to come back to help them out. Oh, oh, just one, one of three. And he's bought himself time, of course. But what is he doing with that time? He's increasing his supply over and over and over. So it is good for him. But still no storm bin research. Sitting on the same army composition. I think the Overseers are going to be too protected. Unless a full engagement happens with both armies clashing to one another and the Phoenix start focusing them down. There's the double time warp slowing this army from actually advancing forwards. Still Archon heavy here. He's actually not trying to get to Storm. He's trying to just use Archons. Obviously Hydra's going to do a lot here. Stardust under a lot of pressure. Nurture really ramping it up here. Archon's going to town, but those, those Banelings, a lot of them do get picked up and nice. do not connect with those Zealots. But there's still a lot of Banelings and Hydralists trying to plow through. This is 50 supply up. Yeah, I, I can't... I, I really think that the Storm is the best thing to deal with this. Otherwise, just don't play this style properly because Nurture's doing it so well. Those Phoenix come in and now they're going to be able to kill off those Overseers uh, in that's time. That's it, that's it. Uh, this is just too much. He's there is just on, too much. Is the Overseers died. DT's warp in and he will push this oh, back. Oh, actually, yeah. There's the Overseers did die, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, there's two more in production, but the Hydralisks... They're at the main base. This is a good job that the Hydralisks actually have a speed upgrade now because they can actually get away a little bit quicker. Yeah, they're going to get away. <laughs> the, the next attack's going to be even more painful here, but the Overseers did die, though. That I didn't notice those dying off, so that's kind of good. And they are slow, as you can see. He hasn't actually got the uh, the <laughs> speed. He's actually getting it now, the Overlord and Overseer speed. You can test Carapace. But look at that. Stardust does survive here for now. But there's another attack coming. The Hydras did keep their lives. Yeah, they're going to try and push on against this wall. And, you know, with the trade that happened with Nurcio's uh, economy behind that and the bank that he accrued with this, uh, these these Hydralisks having survived for this long, it's just too much. I, I don't see how Stardust can actually hold this off. Spit, 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 see the Hydralisks. Th th and that's how exactly how they sound in this engagement. GG, Nurcio ties up the series two to two. And for the first time in our finals day, we go to a fifth game. <laughs> that's right. This is uh, the, the closest series we've had so far this weekend as we are going to the final game. And Nurcio does put himself equal again in this series, even though I think he would like to say to himself that he should have won this already. But we are going to game number five now, which is going to be Belshire Vestige, if I remember correctly, of all the maps. And I, I just have to say that I really think that Storm is the better style with that play. Yeah. Uh, it, it makes the most sense. Uh, everything's just so vulnerable to it. They just melt, especially if you're able to land the time warps. Um, Hydralisks with speed upgrade off Creeper, still not the fastest of units. So shutting that down, especially since there's no centrifugal hooks as well. Everything's so slow. Storm, storm all the way, my friend. Lots of storm. Um, so coming into this last game on Bell Sheer Vestige, what do you think Stardust does? Does he change it up completely now? Does he try to play out the same style like he just did and make small adjustments? Does he go into some, I don't know, a Mordor in, Warp Prism play, 
try to go for a zealot attack on the third base of Nurture, who's shown rather good defense today on that. Where do you think Stardust goes? Because he's the meant to, he's meant to be the creative one as Protoss in this matchup. Yeah, I think more times than not, uh, over the weekend, the times we've seen this double Stargate Phoenix play against Zergs, it's just not working. It's just not really working. So something different, anything different, uh, because he's already shown that he can actually make them work. So I don't know, the same Stargate play, but Void Rays, I like. I thought Void Rays were okay as long as he can hold his third. All right, we'll see what Stardust is gonna pick here as we are almost ready to begin map number five of the first best of five of the day. Of course, coming up straight after this is gonna be Targa going uh, head to head with Duck Duck in a fight to play the winner of this series right now. We've got some pretty cool series on the way today. That's right. And then, of course, we've obviously played the, 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 the winner match of these two play, these two uh, games. Yep. And then we go over to MMA versus Vortex. Uh-oh. A highlight game of today. And then MC versus Genius to decide who has a brain and who doesn't. That's a good one, man. That's a good one. I cannot wait for any of these. This is going to be such a good day of StarCraft as we load up onto the final map to find out who advances on to challenge for that fifth place spot of the season finals as we are spawning up to the top left hand corner our red Protoss representing my insanity as well as Korea. Give it up for Stardust. <laughs> and spawning down the bottom right hand corner representing Acer as well as Poland. Give it up for Nurcio. Nurture is, uh, is known for really changing things up himself, though. But I think the way that this is going, he's understood his opponent's staple strategy in Zerg versus Protoss. He said, all right, your main focus is this style, and I beat it in his mind every time. Yes. So I think Nurture, coming into this, is probably very, very confident in himself. He's saying, all right, cool. I know how to beat this guy. And any odd, weird build that he tries to, uh, to achieve through uh, early Zealot pressure, plus one attack, stuff like that, um, it's not going to work, really, is it? No, I don't think so. I, I think that Stardust, I think you make a very, very good point about what Nocho has been doing in this series. The fact that, you know, he is a player that, as much as he does like his own trends, he, he can adapt pretty well across the series. He's seen what his opponent's up to, and uh, yeah, I think he's going to be very confident as well. I really do. All right, so just a regular opening here by Nurture. Notice the overlords again. One to the natural, one to the third base. Nurture isn't one to have that overlord around the main to poke in. So that could be a very... Uh, I mean, Stolas doesn't know where the overlords are. I mean, if he was a map hacker, then he'd be able to say, I'm going to uh, hide everything inside the main base. Yep. Uh, but that's not, not really the uh, going to happen, is it? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, just one game away now to decide who moves on. One game away to decide who finishes their run here at the WCS Europe Premier League for Season 3. As, as mentioned earlier, is our last season for this year, and we'll be coming back in 2014. Of course, there's still the America WCS, still Korea WCS, and of course, Season 3 Finals and BlizzCon, but here in little old Germany, it will be our last day. Yeah. And uh, it's important to note that for all of these top eight players playing today, they, I'm pretty sure they have a direct seed into 2014's Premier. So, uh, unless the system takes a drastic turn. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see a lot of these players next year. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Yeah, definitely. They're, uh, they're contending at the very highest level here in Europe. And there's been, actually, yesterday's games, as much as they were one-sided, they were very, very entertaining to cast and watch. So, uh, I'm expecting no less from today. And we now have the Stargate probably on its way here. By the looks of it, the second gas is exactly the same time. And as the probe moves down, he's aligning it with 150 gas. So we are going to see the Stargate uh, being put down here by Stardust. And oh no, he started a sentry. Where's he going? Oh, is he going to take a fast third? Uh, yeah. And look at that overload that Nurture always has there. Uh, 
Okay. And she was like, yeah, baby, I put that over there every game, and finally I see what yes. I want to see. And, and he just uh, moves out of position. Five <laughs> games, he's finally seen it. Oh, Nerd So Nerd Show now knows exactly what he's going up against, which is actually one of the older. <laughs> so we talked about the staple build of Stardust today, which is yeah. very heavily on, on the you know, Phoenix and double Stargate play, but this fast third was what made Stardust the player he is today. At DreamHack Summer, when he was able to beat Violet, Hyun, Jadong, and every other Zerg player that he slayed that day or that weekend, was this kind of style. A fast third into a super <laughs> strong mid game because of such a strong economy he sets himself up earlier with. Dude, it's, it's so funny though, because Nurcio having seen that third, he's like, yes, it's Christmas. And then instantly realizing, ah, oh, well, you know, he doesn't have speed because he just wasn't in his build, like throws down two gases and like, okay, maybe I want the gas now so I can actually have speed and maybe yeah. try and punish that. But, but what he may oh. do here is play very greedy. <laughs> He's building 10, 12 Zerglings. He's going to go for it, man. If this he is what goes he with slow Zerglings to try to destroy this, he gets gonna work. it. Uh... I'm going to eat a hat. <laughs> um, 16 Zerglings. So he's going to try and do this. What I thought. Oh, Banelings as well. That's okay. That's interesting. <laughs> There's a Banelings nest. I was like, the Banelings nest is interesting. The noise is interesting. This is. This is you all know, working out really well. You know, sometimes <laughs> when I cast Starcraft, my body gets excited and weird noises come out. Um, but 20 and a bang. Oh my god. He's just going to try and connect with the sentries. And he's going to blow it up. Uh oh. He's going to blow it up. Oh, all right. Wow. And, now, and now the Hallucinate Phoenix sees the slow Zergling. This is so clever. If he can morph in enough Banelings for this, because, you know, the uh, speed will be quite late. Actually, you know, if he was fully committed to a blow up of the entire Nexus. Ah, uh, this then is. This is <laughs> this is going to be funny. Um, Run away! Ah. <laughs> eight, six. I can't read that. I, twelve. Six and eight is looks the same, so I'm happy it's twelve. Um, twelve <laughs> banelings, and he's morphing them around here. To be honest, if he tries to go for, for this area here, there's a sentry with a couple of force fields available. Uh -huh. Can't be morphed in here. Where is he going with these banelings? The most of course, obviously looking at them. He has to be going for the third, right? That's the he whole is. plan of this. He's going for the third. Uh oh. I think he just wants to break down the zealots as well as that wall. Get to the cannon. Can he get to it? Yes, he can. He kills the cannon off. And those circlings and banelings are absolutely swarming this third base. There's really not much defense there at all. It, Stardust is, ah. is dropping in supply here. Ah. Boats and overcharge activated, but he's got a full surround on the oh, Nexus. Oh, it's going. And, yeah, well, that's kind of a little bit bad. It's going, it's going. The Banelings trying to connect as well, but the Nexus is gone. Nice. And now Dark Shrine goes down. Stardust is in a lot of trouble. Went behind, go Dark Shrine, as they say. So yeah. Dark Shrine is on its way. Nurcio, perfect. Uh, to be honest, that was a very, very solid style uh, and very good execution. He says, all right. Like I did, my oval is in position. I've finally seen that Nexus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then he goes for what he knows best and how to deal with this. And he destroys the third Nexus. From this position, Nurcio really shouldn't be losing this game. He really shouldn't be losing this game. But. He should be going on to the next round. But as you said, yeah. the Dark Shrine is down. There's a pylon and probe on the left hand side. But oh, lucky, lucky. Oh, Nurcio, you're on top of things. He cancels. And now the DTs, three DTs will have to get warped in from home. Nurture still without seeing. Uh oh, oh. Does he see yeah, the blur? He's, he, well, he clicked the Zerglings, uh, but did he actually see it? Uh, does it even matter if he actually gets in here? Is the question? Those Banelings not going to get in just yet. Those force fields will hold that at bay. Yeah, do he, no he has detection. A no detection. Double if he loses his third, there's like one spot crawler somewhere. Goes back to two base versus two base. It's inside the main. Oh. Uh oh, he's still got to hold on here at the front. Those sentries get warped in. If he loses, okay, so 20. the DTs are actually spreading themselves. He's going for all three bases because he's expecting damage. maybe no detection at all. Uh, and now Nurture realizes he's like, oh my god, no! Overseers Not everywhere. Again. <laughs> These DTs have been a thorn in his side for all series long, and now he should be able to clean them up. He's already lost a few drones. Losing some more at the third. And remember, it's not like Nurcio killed his opponent's second base of two, you know? It's like yeah. he killed a third base that was taken very early on, but it's still he's still okay with the probes he has, the economy, and the tech he has. Big supply block here for Stardust, though. Really need two units out to combat Nurcio, who did lose with nine workers in total. So not a whole lot. Mothership Core comes in for good measure and uh, tries to do some damage herself. The two queens are out of position. Well, that's really slowed Nurcio down a lot here, and he's only on, at the moment, Zerglings. And he gets a few Stalkers for his troubles over to the north. He's also morphing in Novus here, so he can deal with Dark Templars. There's not going to be enough army here for Stardust to claim this third in time soon. Uh, uh, the Hallucinating Phoenix is weird, actually. I'm not sure if I agree with that. 
Because the reason why is he's just given Nurcio a heads up to Colossus when his Colossus of his own weren't ready. So actually the Spires come down earlier than it should have in this oh, game. Oh yeah, what you know? he's actually making Colossi as well. Yeah, I mean, that's he showed weird. a Colossus before it was ready and that's actually given Nurcio a good 30 seconds <laughs> heads up that there's a Colossus. So I'm not too sure about that that decision there. Obviously it's like, oh no, you're not going to break me. Desperation, and desperation. that's what he maybe thought that Nurcio yeah. was looking to do is break him and then show a Colossus so he didn't try to break him. But now Nurcio's got a heads up. Um, he's actually going to, that's actually kind How of nice. weird. That's really nice for Nurcio. He's going to be yeah. able to get Corruptors in this game really fast. He really or is. faster than he should have been. Uh, well, what Prism is going to go over to the left-hand side here for Stardust and he wants to claim his third base again. Uh, but Nurcio, what do we have going? 56 drones. That's not the most amazing position uh, that we've seen Nurcio in in uh, this particular time in this game. But at the same time, Groove Spines plus two melee going down here. So Nurcio is aiming for a bit of a, you know, a kind of a long game mentality here more than anything. Yep. Run away again. <laughs> okay, so they're going to get away. Seven more drones, nine more, ten more drones. Okay, this is kind of where, you know, Nurcio gains that uh, economy momentum that he ideally wants to be at. And that army is still pretty strong. What was that? <laughs> it's just a bailing exploding. Just a bailing. Okay, and Hydralisk speed is on the way as well. So uh, he's going to have quite a, a little bit more of a mobile. Uh-oh. Well, it's look at the spread that Nurture set up with. He's got Zerklings there. He's got uh, quite a few around. The force uh, is going to be good. He's got a lot of sentries, though, considering he built them very early on, and, of course, a lot of Colossus. What's going on here at this third? It's uh, the engagement in the middle just pushes his opponent away. There's a few Zealots just walking into the mineral line and killing off the spore so he can go for DTs there. He warps into DTs at the location as well. Oh, he's going to get the spore he could, here. He could get the Spire if he wanted. Well, do you choose the Spire or the, uh, the Hatchery? Uh, spire, spire, I spire guess. Is the, spire is the option. Yeah. Uh, but he doesn't know that the Nine Corruptors are on the way right now, so, you know, he's just going for this. Obviously, to try and cripple that. Well, there's nine Corruptors got out here, and I guess that if you try to go for the Hatchery, may not have got, it, got a lot more hit points than the Spire does. And the, the, the Spire's been picked off here. Nurture at the same time, though, is uh -oh. kind of down in supply, and that's a lot of units, but the Corruptors are coming in, maybe. This has been a weird game uh, for both sides, to be honest. Yeah, what's happened to any of Nurcio's army? It's as if he hasn't made anything for a long time. Of course, the Corruptors are out, and they will start going to work on this, but the Blink forward here, oh. killing off Corruptors. If those two Colossi stay alive during all of this, because the Corruptors aren't all together. They never came out together. They're not doing yeah. the damage. There you go, GG. Stardust takes the series and advances on again after a very, very close fought series. Those DTs, man. Those DTs out. This is the entire series was wow. Um, but Stardust is the one that gets to move on here. He moves on to the final of the placement matches where he will go up against the winner of Target Duck Duck. And Nurture, unfortunately, that's his run here at the WCS, even though that started out so well with that Nexus kill. Yeah, uh, there were so many games there where Nurture had really good footholds on the game. Uh, but in the end, was not able to fully carry it through, and Stardust advances on. So he's going to be playing against either Targa or Duck Duck in the decider to find out who advances onto the Season 3 Finals. That's right, and that's a very important game. So Stardust has now an hour or two for a bit of breathing and to <laughs> calm himself down just to get ready for that next game, which will be upcoming very, very shortly here. Uh, but that was a... That was a, a a dynamic series, to be honest. I, I didn't really expect it to play out like that. I didn't really think it would go to five games either. Uh, but there we have it. That was a, a fun way to start the day. Yeah, it really was. Bit of a wacky series, but there you go. It's always nice to have some of those happening. Uh, we had a lot of a lot of clean sweeps yesterday. Uh, now to kick the uh, day two off with that was good. Yeah, that's good. And we will be going to a winner's interview very shortly here with Stardust and, of course, in control. And then we'll be going over to analysis with Grubby to kind of break down a game of one of those five uh, to kind of learn a little bit more from the professional that is Grubby. I'm kind of excited for the next game as well. Target Duck Duck should be good too. Yeah, I certainly think so. I'm, lo I'm looking forward to casting it. I think I'm going to be casting it with Grubby. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Uh, but anyway, guys, without further ado, let's send it for an interview with the winner, Mr. My Insanity Stardust. Thank you, Apollo and Calaris. I'm here with Stardust, who just won that very close series. Uh, we compiled some stats for you, so I'm going to run it by you real quick. Every time you go to Stargate, always lose. Every time you lose Nexus at third, always win. Why? 
because it's kind of the push play. Like if I start with three gate or four gate jello push, anyway, he, uh, my opponent make juggling or lochi is make greedy. I make poor, but anyway, if I make nexus, juggle make juggling and lochi, same. Even I lost nexus, it's just 400 mineral and then juggle losing more than 400. It's anyway, it's good trade. Yeah, so we had some really very close kind of gut-wrenching games. Um, I think back to that Whirlwind game where your third base just kept dying. You had Void Rays, but then all of a sudden Mutilus show up. And I know that feeling. Protoss always die. But you attack, and you attack at exactly the right time. Did you think you had a chance? What was going through your head in that Whirlwind game when, when you knew you were down and you were way behind and the only way you could win was with that attack. In the game, I just think I'm lost to this game. I just make next game plan. But when his mutual come to my main, ba main base, and then just I'm recall. And then his mutual is going to my third, and then all juggling is there. And then I don't have the choice. I just want, I need to go. Just even I'm losing, even I win. Just go, and then very fortunately, his army put, um, change is a little bit need more time, so I'm just easy win. <laughs> okay, very good. Okay, so next up, you have two more opponents in front of you. They're going to play, and you're going to decide who you want to play. Which, well, you're not going to decide, but they will. Which one of those two would you rather face, a Zerg or a Protoss right now? Actually, I have a very big confident versus Zerg, but I don't know why. My game is so terrible in the, at the ESS studio. <laughs> Maybe people think uh, his target is, two target is so terrible, but in the practice, it's very wonderful game. So I wanted to show him the nice strategy, like before uh, two pose in motor, but I'm failed. But next time, I will show you the wonderful game. OK. Well, thank you very much, Stardust fans here. Would love to see that wonderful game. I think Targa would love to see the wonderful game. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for the interview. Sorry, there's okay. We're going to go over to Grubby with the analysis of those games. Take it away, Grubby. Hey guys, what an amazing series between these two. Really, really close. Fantastic games. I'm really excited about it. I'd like to talk about every game, but I've been told that I can't. So, I'll take it to this uh, key game here. Stardust was uh, behind 0-1. And he could have been behind O2, and that would have been very comfortable for Nurcho indeed. Taking a look here, Nurcho has almost every advantage in the book, but there's a few things he doesn't have. He doesn't know right now that Stardust is doing his last ditch attempt. The third base from Stardust died many times. Yeah, but he doesn't know right now where Stardust's army is, and there is no third right now. Uh, Nurcho has more bases, double the bases. He's got almost double the workers. He's got a more mobile army, but the only thing he doesn't have is good creep spread and static defenses. And because of that, it gets a little bit harder to defend. So I think most of the people who are watching this, they thought that Nurture is probably going to win this and it might have changed the outlook of the series. But if we fast forward a little bit, he took a fight with Mutilis, which a lot of Protoss players will tell you generally probably you shouldn't do. Um, I feel like there was two ways, and it's easy to speak now, of course, and it's much, much harder to play. But there's two ways that Nurture probably could have been able to take it. One is if he spread his Mutilis out more, or came from the other side that his Roaches were, so that Archons cannot attack both at the same time. Like right now, we've got all the Mutilis here, and if we... Uh, the, the Archon's doing a lot of damage on the Mutilis. See all that splash damage on those Mutilis. If they came from the other side, that might help. The second thing is, don't take a fight. Might be hard because he didn't have enough static, but I'd be curious to see if these guys replayed it. They're good friends, so maybe if they practice together and they replayed this fight, Nurture went for a base trade, would it have looked different? Because it's just two bases from Protoss. Wipe the foundation out from under him and he can't really reinforce much. So this, I think, was the key game in the series. And in the end, it still became a really close one. Great play by Stardust coming from behind again. And Nurture also did really great, but uh, it's Stardust who will be advancing on. Thanks for listening.
All right. Thank you, Grubby. A wonderful analysis. I'm here with Apollo. We're going to talk a little bit about social media and a sponsor, of course. Uh, as always, guys, make sure and hashtag WCS. Um, and, and in case some of you are wondering what that does, it allows for people that are kind of seeing it trending to say, what's this WCS thing about? For instance, I just tweeted at Tyra Banks asking if Apollo is tushing well enough while he's casting. Now, if you don't know what tushing is, it's probably because you don't have a girlfriend or aren't married and don't have to watch shows like that. Um, but unfortunately, I do know what tushing means. Now you're going to go Google that, so I'll let you to do that. Um, and Apollo knows what that means, too. So if now, Tyra Banks replies, potentially we could open this up to a whole new world of fashion, and I know a lot of people on Reddit would be really excited about that. Um, too many people. But make sure and hashtag WCS and be a part of that, that conversation, that participation. We're also doing that art contest today again. So if you're into drawing and creating artwork that's StarCraft II related, submit that with hashtag WCS, and you could win yourself a collector's edition autographed StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm box, undropped by Red Eye. Also, make sure and follow ESL TV on Twitter. That's where a lot of those meaningful tweets will come. And it's pretty awesome stuff. Now, Apollo, I understand you've uh, got a message for us. That's right. So anyone that voted for Nurture, uh to win, I'm sorry, you're definitely not going to get the box. So change it now, make another account, and go to facebook.com slash rockat. And at that page, you will find on the front of it a picture of Damaga with his keyboard that he has signed and wants to give it away. All you got to do to win it to go there, like the page, comment on the post, and say who you think is going to be the Season 3 champion. It's kind of easy. There's four players left. Pick one of them. <laughs> Maybe if you voted yesterday, you have to go back, delete your post, post again today. And you I don't think there's checks. very strict rules about this. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Like, We're making up the rules on the spot here. Maybe... Maybe post now and then edit when it's down to the final two. For <laughs> <laughs> We are in trouble, usually, probably, as we make the rules up here. But yes. maybe you win, and maybe it's thanks to us. That could be pretty awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick commercial break while we set up that next match. Uh, it's going to be Targa versus... Who is that over there? Duck Duck, of course. Another PVZ for you guys. <laughs> it's going to be awesome, so don't go anywhere. We'll see you guys soon. Hello people, I'm Dimaga. I want to show you new cool features for Rocket Rise MK Pro mechanical keyboard. It's called Per Key Illumination. You can uh, switch on or switch off uh, lights per every button on keyboard. Also, you can disable 